This is Tampa Tech, and learn something new from PC, TVs, and gaming too. Let's get it started. Hi, this is Tampa Tech, and I want to show you how to fix any remote control. Whether it's a video game controller, or a remote controller, or whatever it is. Okay? So, you can fix any remote control that you threw on the ground, broke, you lost that game, you're playing online gaming, you threw it against the wall, the Giants beat the uh, Patriots in the Super Bowl again, and you threw it at the wall and broke your controller. Alright? So, this is how you do it. First, if it doesn't work, it doesn't turn it on and off the TV. First thing you want to do is check the infrared sensor. See that light right there? The human eye cannot see the IR sensor because it's infrared. We can't see that light light spectrum with our human eye. All right, only a camera like this. All right, and the camera that I have right now. That's where you're able to see it on YouTube. All right, because it's filmed with a camera. So what you want to do is take your digital camera with your phone, put it in camera mode, okay, and then hit a button and see if you see the infrared. And we do. If it's weak looking, change the batteries. But if you are not getting that, then your infrared sensor is dead. You can replace it with any other old remote controller that you're not presently using. So you can take this thing apart and steal the infrared sensor, which is kind of like a light uh, LED light, light, light emitting diode, and uh, you can just take that away, to, you know, steal it from this, and then put it in here, and it should work. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So you take out the batteries, and let's say the circuit board's cracked. Uh, let's say you're not getting the light, all right? So first things first, we want to make sure the circuit board is working. We're going we're gonna to clean the circuit board. We're going to do a bunch of, like, number uh, of things. So once you take out the batteries, you want to stick your screwdriver in here, flathead, and go ahead and uh, pry it all open. It's all clips, by the way. All right, and put it face down. All right. So there's the circuit board right there. Now, if you spilled juice in it or whatever happened or soda and the buttons aren't working or sticking, you can use rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. So let's go ahead and do that since we have it all apart. and then you want to clean all this out. Clean all the contacts. Okay? Now the contacts are clean. Now you want to clean the inside right here. Clean all that. You can take this off. Okay? You can clean it all in here, and you can clean it all in here too, because sometimes the buttons will stick in there. Alright, so you get the idea. Okay? But you want to make sure all the buttons line up too in the end. Alright, so that's how you clean it, um, you know, sticky soda, spill, any. that's how you clean that. All right, now, if there was a cracked board, let's say this board this is only a one-sided board, and it has a single capacitor right here, all right? And let's say you have a, uh, a crack in the board, all right? And let's say the crack is right here. You can use a magnifying glass to look for the crack, okay? Or you can just, you know, look for the crack with your own eye. So if you do have a crack, let me show you how to fix a cracked circuit board. Now, if you have a cracked circuit board, get sandpaper, okay? And anywhere where you see the crack, let's say the crack is it's usually on the outskirts. Because, you know, usually when if you throw it um, against something or drop it on the tile, hard tile, it will crack on the outside. So first thing, when you look for a crack, it'll probably be on the outside of the circuit board. You want to sand it down so it exposes the 
the uh, traces. All right, and under that it's copper, by the way. All right, so next thing you want to do is you, if it's a really bad crack, you could get a piece of wire or solder. Now, if it's a small crack, you could just use solder. But if it's a big crack, you could use um, a wire to jump it. Now, what some people use is speaker wire. I mean, speaker wire is fine if it's really thin. So you take uh, snippers. All right, and then you just, you know, go ahead and expose that right there. And then you can solder that right there across and make a bridge. So uh, the connection's back, you know, back to new. Well, not new, but you got that uh, conductivity running across as a bridge, which is fine. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. All right, I use a solder gun, a radio shack. I mean, you can get a solder gun anywhere, Amazon, whatever. Doesn't necessarily matter. After you sand it down, all right, you want to um, make sure it's going to bond. Okay? So, what you do is uh, you can go ahead and prep prep it by running solder across the, um, the board right here. Just heat it up and then dab solder. Heat up the trace right there. Not too much, you don't want to burn the trace off and just run it left and right. If that works across the bridge, then you're done. But if the crack is really bad, and make sure you don't solder all the traces. You're gonna short out everything. So once you uh, go ahead and solder across, like that, then you gotta, you know, the solder will stick to it, to the board. And then you heat up, go ahead and heat it up, let it sit, and then it should stick right there. Okay? Just like that. If you have to use more solder, then go ahead and do, just heat it up. and then dab just like that all right and just hold it still for like a couple seconds and let it like cool off naturally I don't know if you can see that okay now once you're done with that all right you want to snip off the excess and make sure it is not touching anything else. So right now you just fix the cracked board with a piece of uh, you know speaker wire and solder. And see how like it bonds to the circuit board because we uh, soldered the circuit board first. We layered it with solder because the sandpaper took the oxidation away, so it's able to be uh, the solder is able to grab onto the circuit board and the copper. And uh, so now you made that bridge. All right. So next thing that you want to do after you clean it and after you uh, fix the crack, um, and let's say this is bad. All right, so if you want to replace this, go ahead and steal the uh, IR sensor out of the old remote that you don't use anymore, and you can go ahead and put it in this one. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, if you look right here, make sure you get it the right way. I don't know if you can see that right there, but you see how this side inside of it the clear glass is short and this side is almost like a like a what do you call it kinda like a backwards seven I guess or it looks like a, almost an L shape and you can see that it's hard to see it but it, basically it's going like this it's going that way and then that way okay so we want to make sure that it goes in the right way so let's go ahead and do that and you're going to get a solder gun and then you're also going to get a solder sucker. Okay. Now, once you get the solder gun and solder sucker, you want to heat up the pin, hold down it, and then suck it out. That easy. Make sure you squeeze the excess away from the board. Heat it up again. And just like that. 
So those are two really good solder suctions. And then you should be able to wiggle the pins free. Just like that. Should come straight out. Just like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the new one. Put the new one back in. Make sure it's facing the uh, you know, the right way. Hold it down. Right there. And let's go ahead and solder the new one in. Now I use thin solder because it's more accurate for me. And then I heat up the pin first. like that boom that was a good one make sure you don't solder both pins together it's not gonna work boom all right you don't solder the solder you solder the pin you heat it up and then you dab the solder where the pin is got that all right now let's put it all back together Alright, and by the way, when I put my uh, my solder gun down, I put it down like that. And there's better ways to do it, of course. Alright, and then now you just flip this over, like so. Okay. And go ahead, and it should uh, all snap in. Just line it up. You have to line it up really carefully. It goes in the, this is kind of like tedious a little bit, just like that. See how that goes in the groove right there? This, that spring right there, goes in the slot. Okay. And then, you have to push this. like that. I don't know if you saw that. See the infrared sensor? Okay, and next thing you want to do is just go ahead and just snap it all in. Make sure it's flush all the way around. And then next thing you want to do is put the battery is in the battery and another battery. Like that and go ahead and test it and make sure it works. Boom. And it works. Again, use your digital camera to see. If you don't see that white light because you, you're using your naked eye, use the digital camera so you can see this light. Again, your human I cannot see infrared. You don't see that light spectrum. So, uh, an ultraviolet, I believe. Um, so, there's certain light spectrums that we don't see and frequencies we don't hear. Alright, but use your digital camera on your cell phone. You'll be able to see it blinking like that. Thanks for watching. Post a comment and subscribe to Tampa Tech.